This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Our Father, lead us as we study thy word today, honor thy precious word, the name of Jesus, the shed blood of his cross, and save some precious soul for Jesus' sake. Amen. I'm reading again today Acts 21, 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it, therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Now, the grievance that Paul's people had against him was that he taught the people to forsake Moses. Now, Paul did not teach the people to forsake Moses. Paul taught the people that the gospel of the grace of God was now in effect, and the grace of God and the law of Moses will not, cannot mix. It is either grace, pure grace, all grace, or no grace. Paul definitely teaches the Galatians, or that is, in Galatians, he teaches us, he taught them, that if we are guilty of the least of the commandments, we are guilty of every iota of the law. Now, it's either all of grace or all of law, and there has never been and there never will be flesh justified by the law. The law points out to us the holiness of God, God's justice. It reveals what man is not. Now listen. The law of God reveals what man is not. Man is not holy. Man is not righteous. Man is not godly. And man has not accepted God, never has and never will, unless the grace of God is bestowed upon him. It was true in the case of Adam. It was true in the case of Cain. And all down through the history of man, Man has never yielded to God and has never served God until God put within him grace, a new heart, and a new spirit. Now, if there's anything at all clear in the Word of God, crystal clear, it is that man is a sinner. Hopeless, helpless, he cannot save himself. But the gospel is the good news that the law has been honored, the holiness of God has been satisfied, the claims of the law have been met, and God is satisfied with His Son. You read in Hebrews chapter 10 that God found no pleasure in the blood offered from Eden to Calvary. The sacrifices offered under the law did not bring God any pleasure. Now, because of these blood sacrifices, God... Uh, overlooked. That is, we find in Romans 3 that through forbearance, God allowed these sacrifices until the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, came and in the fullness of time, born of a woman, born to redeem them that were under the law. Now, the good news is that Jesus honored the law. He lived here. He fulfilled every jot and every tittle of God's law. He met the penalty in death and he is now risen and seated at the right hand of the majesty. He's there to make intercession for you and for me and for whosoever will come to God by him. The gospel brings the good news that there is forgiveness with God now since the Lord Jesus Christ satisfied the law. He fulfilled every jot and every tittle. We can have life eternal, but only through receiving the Lord Jesus by faith. I repeat again today what I said on yesterday, and I think I said it the day before. I make no apology for dwelling on this subject of law and grace. If you could read my mail, then you'd understand why I am emphasizing the grace of God and declaring that Paul did not he did not preach against Moses. He did not forsake Moses. He did not preach against the law. We'll see in just a few minutes that Paul said, the law is holy. The law is holy. Now, the law was given to show man just how unholy man is. I'm reading again today in Galatians chapter 4, 
And I'll begin with verse uh, 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now, you see, man knows that sin is sin because sin is the transgression of God's law. Now, if you want the Bible definition of sin, you'll get it out of 1 John where the Bible declares that sin is the transgression of God's law. Now, men do not agree on the definition of sin. Some say sin is this and some say sin is the other. But the Bible says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now that's in 1 John 3 and verse 4. Please jot it down. If you want the Bible definition of sin, it is transgressing God's law. And if you're guilty of the least, you're guilty of every jot and every tittle of the law. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He fulfilled every jot and he fulfilled every tittle. Now the law schoolmaster to bring us to God that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now you know... If you could read my mail, you'd understand why I'm making the statement that I'm about to make. Beloved, it is astounding and astonishing in these closing days of this day of grace, and I believe with all of my heart that a few weeks ago, I believe we saw the beginning of the end. I believe that. I'd love to be preaching on prophecy these days, but I could not get permission from the Lord God. I could not get permission from the Holy Spirit to leave this book of Acts and preach prophecy. But I believe just a few weeks ago, we saw in just about three days the beginning of the end. Now, I don't mean that Jesus is coming right this minute. He could. The rapture could take place right now. The rapture could occur right now. I'm saying that we who are alive, those of us who are alive, we've seen one of the greatest fulfillments of prophecy that has occurred in the past 2,500 years. I believe the stage is set for the rapture. And I'm looking for Jesus today, and if he doesn't come today, I'm going to look for him tonight. And if he doesn't come tonight, I'm going to look for him the first thing tomorrow morning. Glory to God. But I'm not setting any dates. I don't know when he's coming, but I know the stage is set. I know the hour is upon us when the rapture will occur, and every believer will be caught out of this earth and caught up to meet Jesus in the clouds. Praise God to be with Jesus forever. Now let's get back. Watch this. But after that faith has come... We are no longer under a schoolmaster. I was about to say this. It's astounding. It's astonishing. It's alarming at the people in this country who believe that we must keep the commandments. We must obey part of the law. Now let me show you, for instance, and please don't misunderstand me because I'm trying to help you. If I offend you and if I make you angry, then you cut the radio off. I can't help you. I don't want you to cut the radio off. I want you to leave the radio on. I want you to turn it up a little bit. If anything, don't cut it off. Turn it up. Now, here's what I'm saying. You say, Brother, and I mentioned this the other day, but I want to go a step further. You say, Brother Green, I believe that Jesus was virgin born. I believe you, Son of God. I believe that. I believe the Bible preached green. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe they buried him. I believe God raised him. I believe he ascended. I believe he now sits at the right hand of God. I believe all that. But, I believe that you must do more. I believe you must be immersed in water in the name of Jesus. I believe you must speak in tongues if you have the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, if you do not have the Holy Ghost, you do not belong to God. So if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're on the road to hell. And if you must speak in tongues to have the Holy Ghost, then those who teach that, if you haven't spoken in tongues, they'll tell you that you're on the road to hell. Now, There are others, they say, now you must worship on a certain day. You cannot worship any day you choose, but a certain day. And if you don't worship on that day, you have the mark of the beast. There are thousands who believe if you do not worship on the Jewish Sabbath, that you have the mark of the beast. And there are others who say, if you eat certain kinds of food, if you eat certain kinds of meat, if you eat certain kinds of 
things. You are a sinner. You must abstain from this and abstain from that. You must do this and you must do that. And you must do it this way on this day or... Now let me tell you. Let me tell you. Christ is the end. You spell that E-N-D. End. Christ is the end of the L-A-W. L-A-W. Law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, if you want to step inside the pearly gates, regardless of your nationality, regardless of your religion, regardless of your persuasion, regardless of what you are, if you hope to step inside the pearly gates and walk down the street of gold, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And to be redeemed, that's all you can do. Now, after you're redeemed, there are many things you can do after you are redeemed. The Bible says, work out your own salvation. Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Mr. Green, why don't you preach on that? I'd be very happy to talk about that. Work out your own salvation. Paul writing to the believers in Philippi. But I want to ask you something. Now, I was a farmer. I'm still a, a country boy. I love the farm. I love the farm. And if I were not a minister today, I'd be a farmer. I mean that. I love the country. I love the farm. Now, my dad had a little farm. Of course, it was mortgaged, heavily mortgaged when he died. Just a little farm, 40 acres, 39 acres. Now, my dad worked his own farm. That is, he had the deed. He didn't have it paid for, but it was in his name. Now, he worked his own farm. And the only way that a man can work his own farm is to own his farm or at least be making payments on it. Now, if it was uh, another man's property, he would be a tenant. Well, now, Mr. Green, what are you trying to say? Well, you can't work out your own salvation until you possess your own salvation by faith in Jesus. Now, Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, and salvation is of the Lord, the book of Jonah and the Psalms. Salvation is of the Lord. Now, Christ is our salvation. Christ is our righteousness. And righteousness is imputed. You don't work for righteousness. You do not work for righteousness. Righteousness is imputed. But when you become a son of God, then you work because we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ under good works. Now that's Ephesians 2.10. But you cannot work out your own salvation until you possess your own salvation. You can't paint your own house unless you own your own home. Now if you're renting, you're painting another man's house. So you can't work out your own salvation until you possess your own salvation. And the only way to possess salvation individually is to individually exercise faith in God. What must I do to be saved? The jailer said, Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now read this. After faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now that's what Paul was preaching. And they said he had forsaken Moses and forsaken everything. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. May I have your attention? I want you to listen to me very carefully. I tithe my income. I've been baptized. I belong to a local church. I support missions. I don't drink liquor. I don't dance. I don't take God's name in vain. Miss Green, why are you telling us that? I'm telling you that to tell you this. I do not abstain or do to become a son of God. Now, back yonder, well, now, of course, it's a little over 33 years ago. September the 1st, just behind us, I was saved 33, 33 years. This is my 34th year of being a Christian. Now, a little over 33 years ago, when I bowed my head and I said, God, I don't know how to pray and I don't know what to say and I don't even know how to ask you to save me. But I said, dear God, you know what I want and what I need. And God did, and God understood, and the Spirit took over there. You know, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, and the Holy Ghost is the attending physician at the birth. We're born of the Holy Ghost. 
And so when I told God that I didn't know how to pray and didn't know how to say what I wanted to say, God knew my heart. God knew I was telling the truth. And so God, uh, the Holy Ghost, born me into God's family. Now listen. The Holy Ghost did not born me into God's family because I promised to tithe. I promised not to cuss, not to get drunk. I promised to join the church and be immersed in water. Now, the Holy Ghost didn't born me into God's family because of that. I've done those things since because I was born into God's family by faith. Now, listen, I said, God, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to pray. But God, you know. Now, that's faith. I said, God, you know, and God did know, and God saved me. Beloved, I beg you, you're not saved by keeping the commandments. You say, Brother Green, I live by the golden rule. I'll guarantee you living by the golden rule will never save you. If it were possible for you to live in detail by the golden rule, if it were possible for you to observe the golden rule in every minute detail, every jot and every tittle, it, you'd still burn in hell when you die because the golden rule could never save you. We are saved by faith, 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 believing God, believing God, believing God. Now that's the thing that saves, not law. And they said, you teach that we're not to circumcise our children. You've forsaken Moses. No, no, we have not forsaken Moses. We have not forsaken the law. And we are not doing away with the law. For ye are all the children. I'm reading in Galatians 3, and I just can't, I just can't get away from it because there's somebody out there today miserable. You joined the church and you've been trying to live right. That's not the way to get to heaven. What do you mean, preacher? I mean exactly what I said. You joined the church and you're trying to live right. You don't go to heaven because you live right. You live right because you are a son of God. That's the reason you live right. People who live wrong live wrongly because they are not children of God. Now, I'm turning. I didn't, I don't have any outline today. Bless your soul. I just have in my hand a little testament and I'm reading out of the testament and I'm going to read you some very enlightening scripture. I'm reading in 1 John 5, 1, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him that is begotten of him. Now that's verse 1, 1 John 5, 1. For whosoever, this is verse 4, this is 1 John 5, 4. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. No, maybe so, think so, hope so, do the best you can. No, sir. It's not that. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory. What is the victory? Living a good life? Trying to live a good life, trying to live for God, trying to overcome. No, listen. For this is the victory. Who says born of God overcometh the world? And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now look at verse 5. This is 1 John 5, 5. Whosoever, or rather, who is he? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Who is he that overcometh the world? No man overcomes the world, but... The man, the woman, the boy, the girl, that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, you don't overcome the world by keeping the commandments. You can't keep the commandments. No man ever kept the commandments except Jesus. You can't keep the law. And if you did, you'd still burn in hell. Romans 3.20, Romans 3.20, read it. Romans 3.20, the law never saved anybody. And the law was never given to save anybody. The law was a schoolmaster. The law was given to show us how exceeding sinful we are and how holy God is. Now, I promise to read you that verse, and I must. It's in Romans 7, and here it is. Verse 14, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal soul under sin. Now, verse 12, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal, sold under sin. Romans seven twelve through 14. Romans seven twelve through 14. The law is holy. The commandment is holy, the law is just, the law is good. 
the law shows us how good God is, how just God is, how pure God is, and how exceedingly impure and unholy and unrighteous we are. Now, Jesus fulfilled the law. In Romans 10.4, Romans 10.4, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes it. Now, tithing and keeping the Sabbath and practicing the golden rule will never save you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ this moment. Believe on Jesus, and Jesus will save you. And you'll know it, because he'll put within you assurance. The Holy Spirit will take up his abode in your heart. Father, honor the precious gospel of the marvelous grace of God. Honor the gospel. Honor the word. The name of Jesus, the shed blood. And save precious church members today who've joined the church, but they've never been born again. Save them by thy grace. In Jesus' name, amen.